today is moving day. We are moving on to West Yellowstone and then we have a couple of options of what we can do once we get there. Yellowstone is a really big park, so I like to split it into more manageable sections, and then we can go and spend a day in each section. In our last video, we explored the Old Faithful area, and the link to that video is here. And then the Dunraven Pass has been closed for the last two years for construction, so that played a part in how I sectioned off the map. Now the pass is open, but we're dealing with flooding in 2022. So my sectioning always changes based on what's open and what's closed in the park. Today we will be focusing on the West Yellowstone, Madison, and the Norris area. And I made chapters for this video in the description box below. That way if you wanna to skip to the next place of interest, you can. Like I mentioned earlier, Yellowstone is a really big park, so there is a lot of driving to do here. And we drove 90 miles from the Grand Teton National Park where we were camped through Yellowstone to the town of West Yellowstone where we will be staying. And it's a really long drive and it's pretty slow, but it is beautiful. Here it is, state line. Yellowstone is actually shared by three states, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. And when you start getting close to West Yellowstone, you cross the state line into Montana right inside the park. Here's their fancier state welcome sign. It's right on the border as you enter town. West Yellowstone is a really small town, but it pretty much has everything you need while you're here on vacation. And it is so cute. The people are really friendly, and I actually prefer it over Jackson. They have plenty of tourist shops where you can find the perfect souvenir tea. And there's several restaurants, but of course I'm drawn to the sweets. And they have a little kiosk called Espresso West that has coffee and ice cream. And the menu for the ice cream is pretty small, but it is delicious. It is so flavorful and I was so happy to find this place. I also tried a huckleberry ice cream sandwich because the Yellowstone area is known for their huckleberry flavored things. It was good. I mean, you can pretty much put any flavor in an ice cream sandwich and it will be good because it's an ice cream sandwich. So that's a quick look at West Yellowstone, our home base for the next few days while we explore the national park. Right now we're gonna head back into the park and look around the Madison and Norris areas. We love to use the Gypsy Guide app no matter how many times we visited. It gives you so much good information. Thank you. Well, it looks like congratulations are in order. You have officially entered Yellowstone National Park. I'm gonna talk in a lot more detail with suggestions about how to explore Yellowstone as we continue along. From West Yellowstone, it's only 14 miles to Yellowstone's main road, the Grand Loop Road, but sometimes it feels like a really long 14 miles. There are things to see along the drive to the loop. You just have to keep your eyes peeled and always looking out the windows. really is a beautiful drive and there's a lot of different turnouts that you can pull over at and just soak up the scenery.
we finally made it to the Grand Loop Road. We're gonna go right here, which is south towards Old Faithful, but we're not gonna go all the way to Old Faithful. Just after we cross the bridge, we'll find the turnoff for Firehole Canyon Road. Our first stop, which isn't much of a stop, it's really a drive, is on the Firehole Canyon Road. It's a one-way, two-mile scenic drive along the Firehole River. I told you, there's a lot of driving in Yellowstone. It's a really pretty drive. I actually prefer doing it either in the mornings or on colder days. That way you can see the steam coming off the river better. The main stop on the drive is at Firehole Falls. It's not the biggest or even the prettiest waterfall in the park, but it kept us entertained. Oh, keep walking, just stare right at, right at the thing, like where it's falling open. See, like way up top. Fish are jumping, right where the water is falling into the... They're like flying up like they Bottom. 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 It's a large shallow pool in the river that you're allowed to swim in. Well, sometimes you're allowed to swim in it. And the water temperature is in the high 70s, low 80s, which is perfect for me because I am always cold. But it's been closed for the last two years because of COVID. So we weren't able to stop and swim there, but it has reopened this year. So we're hoping to eventually go back and check it out. We're back on the Grand Loop Road and we're gonna continue south to another drive. I hope you're not getting car sick yet. Please use caution and give the animals a fair distance that of traffic separation. Is all for that one Three bus lanes is a good side. amount. This is Fountain Flat Drive and it's supposed to be a good place to spot wildlife. In Yellowstone, you have a lot of moments when you think to yourself, is this real life? And this is one of those moments for me. This is exactly how I imagined in my mind what Yellowstone would look like. It almost feels like you traveled back in time. We did drive to the end of the road and we looked for other wildlife, but my impatience might have gotten in the way. We have things to do. We can't just sit here and be patient. They have nothing but they have nothing but time. We have animals to go find. I know I should really work on my relaxing skills, but I just don't think I have time to do that. We are continuing our way south along the Grand Loop Road. And for someone who can't sit still and wait for wildlife, I sure can pull over and take a lot of photos. I can't even explain how my brain works.
Our next stop is yet another drive. You really do spend a lot of time in your car when you're in this national park. And that's probably something that's really good for people with mobility issues because you can see a lot of things without ever having to leave your car. This is Firehole Lake Drive. It's another one-way road that goes three miles and it passes by a few cool geysers and a small smelly Firehole Lake. I was so prepared for this geyser. This is the Great Fountain Geyser, and I had all the information to know when it was close to erupting, but after second guessing myself and again being impatient, I moved on to the next geyser. The White Dome Geyser is only a thousand feet away from the Great Fountain Geyser, and this one I was right on time for. And now I don't know what happened to the videos of these geysers. All I can find are my photos, so you're just gonna have to use your imagination, especially when it comes to what I said when I turned around and saw the Great Fountain erupting behind me. It was actually pretty cool standing between the two. I just wasn't sure which one I should be looking at. I didn't stop for any of the other geysers, even though one of them was called Pink Geyser and I am a sucker for the color pink. And I kind of regret not stopping for that, so I might go back and check that one out next time. I also didn't stop at Firehole Lake because it smelled awful even with my windows rolled up. Right across the street from Firehole Lake Drive is finally a stop to walk around at. It's the Lower Geyser Basin area. I'm not sure why, but I love these trees. They're called Bobby Sox trees, and the name's pretty cute too. It was pretty cold on the day that we visited the Lower Geyser Basin and the Fountain Paint Pots, and that causes everything to be really foggy and hard to see, and it just makes it a little less impressive than what we're used to seeing in the park. Now we're gonna turn around and backtrack a little bit and we're gonna head north up the Grand Loop Road. Ten miles north at the Madison Junction is another paint pot stop. This is Artist Paint Pots and it is a one mile walk that has similar features to the Fountain Paint Pots but with warmer weather, we'll be able to see these easier. This is another short boardwalk trail, but this one's a little more strenuous than the others because there's this little hill that you go up and it felt like a mountain to me. I think I'm in pretty good shape, but I think it's the elevation that really takes it out of you here.
up at the top of this 100 foot mountain that I just climbed, you do get a really good view of the actual mountains, the valley, and the colorful artist paint pot hot springs. But my favorite part of the trail is coming up and it's not just the downhill portion. I love the mud pots here. I don't know if it's my inner child or the beauty product diva in me, but this boiling mud fascinates me. We have just one last stop today, and it is only four miles from here. To visit the Norris Kaiser Basin, we'll turn left to enter. Left. Norris Geyser Basin is made of two areas, the Porcelain Basin and the Back Basin, and it is the hottest, oldest, and most acidic thermal area in Yellowstone. Porcelain Basin definitely wins for best entrance. Somehow this beautiful rock and log structure makes this area feel more grand and special than any of the other basins. I really like the Porcelain Basin, and not just because it has a cool entrance, but the starkness of all the white mineral deposits on the ground really makes a dramatic backdrop to the geysers in the pools. Even the blue in the sky and the green trees really pop because of it. You are my favorite place to go You're at the end of my favorite road Above the rest, you're the best I know. Mm -hmm. You are my favorite shade of rose. A flower bed on my favorite stones. I love the ground. Like I said, I really enjoy this area. Everything in Yellowstone is beautiful, but there's certain places that strike a chord more than others. And this is one of those places for me. Done. We still have the back basin, which is where you find the famous steamboat geyser. The first thermal feature you reach in the back basin is Emerald Spring. It's 27 feet deep and 181 degrees, and although it looks more blue than green to me, it gets its name because of the yellow sulfur at the bottom of the pool reflecting with the blue of the sky coming in and it makes it a green. Steamboat Geyser is probably the biggest name in the Norris Basin. It is the world's tallest active geyser. It reaches 300 feet high and it can last anywhere from three minutes to 40 minutes, but it has been known to last over an hour. But it is really unpredictable. And remember how I said that Norris Basin is one of the hottest and most acidic thermal areas in Yellowstone? Well, that is not good when you're parked in the parking lot and steamboat goes off. 
the rangers actually have car covers that they put over their cars while they're working in that area and if you are parked there and the geyser goes off it will ruin your paint and your windshield and that is an expensive souvenir We did it. We finished exploring the Norris, Madison, and West Yellowstone areas. From here, we have a beautiful 30 mile drive back to West Yellowstone, and we'll probably make a few stops along the way. The sunsets are beautiful in Yellowstone. We decided to park at one of the many turnouts and look for some wildlife and just take in the sunset. We also took a detour on the road out of the park at Riverside Drive. It's another one-way scenic drive that's only about a mile, and it takes you along the edge of the Madison River. We still didn't see any wildlife, but we did get to watch the beautiful big sky sunset. We finally got back into town and it's just as lively and cute at night. Our next day of exploring will be the north part of the park, Mammoth and Tower Roosevelt. So we will see you then. Please use caution and give the animals a fair that distance that of traffic separation. Is all for that one Three bus lanes is on a the good side. amount. No matter. Look at that traffic. Is it that one car? That is crazy. I feel bad for the people in the back here. They're not even going to see anything. They don't even have, they don't even have like... Text me a picture, okay? They don't even have telescopes sent, set up. They're not doing anything. They're not bear aware. They're drinking Chardonnay next to the river. It sounds boring. <laughs> 